Tonight is the last service for 2019. And it's my pleasure to give you a message relating to love and humility. Jesus, remember Jesus said, you, you have to wash each other's feet. Peter couldn't understand. But then when the truth of what Jesus told him hit him between the eyes, Peter said, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. The three very important parts of his body. The going part, the doing part, and the thinking part. I want to be sharing this message with you God tonight. blessing be with you as you take in the service tonight. I want to remind every, every born-again person in Christ that you are a minister. I told you that on Sunday. You are a minister. I know you don't have, a lot of you don't have Bible school training. But you have been born again by the Holy Spirit. You know Christ as your personal savior. You are a minister. In short, you have a purpose to be a witness for Christ, to tell others that Jesus is the answer. That's all you have to do, you know. Let the Lord work out the rest of the things. But Jesus is the answer. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit do his work. You have to do yours. In his ministry on earth, Jesus asked his disciples many direct questions. Sometimes the questions cause embarrassment to his disciples. But they wanted to learn. So they accepted his questioning. One of these times came before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. He knew that. But he was going to perform an act. An act that required love and humility. Let the people say love and humility. Say it again. Say it again. Love and humility. This is what the Lord requires of us. In our service to him and to others. He requires love and humility. I said before that you are ministers and you have to minister love and humility. You know about this act? And tonight is the last service for 2019. And it is important that we question ourselves and ask the Lord directly. I want you to note this particular question that we are going to ask God. In our service to you, God, and to others, have we exhibited the measure of love and humility expected of us? Question number two. Have we lifted you up? Have we lifted you up or have we lifted up ourselves? Two important questions that we need to ask God. Regarding love and humility. You may have heard this before. You've read this before. We're going to read it again. John chapter 13. Verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover. 
when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself. Some other gospel as he took an apron. After that, he poureth water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not to wash his feet, not needeth not save to wash his feet, but to clean every whit, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Then the question came. In verse 12. Know ye what I have done to you? I taught you two very important lessons. I taught you love. I taught you humility. Oh yes, I am your master. I am your Lord. I washed your feet. Now you need to go and wash the feet of others. I have given you an example and you are to teach others. Now I am telling you this, that this is, this practice is not a doctrine. It is not an ecclesiastical custom, as some would have us believe. Jesus gave this as a symbolical example of ministry. He was saying in effect, I have ministered unto you. Now you go and minister unto others. That's what I have done to you. I have ministered unto you. Now you go and minister unto others. Show them love and humility. Now this is the reason why you hear the word. Not only to receive the word and hide the word in your heart, but to share the word with others. What do you do with the word that is given to you? Hide it in your heart, yes. Share the word with others and minister to them. Wash one another's feet. We have given you the word. The ministers. Brother James, Brother Philip. Others. They have given you the word. That's our responsibility. What you do with the word is your prerogative. You have to choose what you are going to do with the word. It's your choice. Our prayer is that you wash one another's feet. That you be in partnership with Jesus. Sharing his righteousness. Walking right. Doing right. Thinking right. I tried to pull up two feet up there. Walking right. It didn't come out. Doing right. That's the work of the hands. 
and thinking right the work of the head. I want you to get it clear, beloved. Peter said, wash my feet. That's the going part of his body. My hands, the doing part of the body. And my head, the thinking part of my body. You have heard this message before. But I believe that the Holy Spirit has urged me to share this message with you tonight on this last night of service for 2019. Your feet, your hands, your head, kingdom people living righteously. This becomes your responsibility. Now many years may have passed since Peter had that encounter with Jesus. The time when Jesus ministered to him. When he washed his feet. Peter could never forget what Jesus told him. Never forget that incident. Jesus told him, what I do now, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Now it was in the later years of his life. Peter, chastened by years of suffering and trials, mistakes galore, but chastened nevertheless, but strengthened by the baptism of the Holy Spirit and his dependence upon the Holy Spirit, Realizing what was the hereafter and understanding the declaration that he himself made, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Peter harking to the words of Jesus. Ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Peter realized that he had a responsibility. He had a responsibility to minister to others. And that's the responsibility that we have. To minister to others. Oh yes we hear the word of God. We hide the word of God in our hearts. What else beloved? What do we do with it after leaving the church service? What do we do with the word after we have said our devotions in the morning? What do we do with it? Do we minister to others? Do we wash one another's feet? Peter writes his letter to the Jews, the Gentile converts, who was scattered in different countries. Why did he do this? He wrote in order to encourage them. To instruct them. And to admonish them. That was what Peter was doing. Encouraging. Instructing. And admonishing. It's written in his, his epistle. The first epistle of Peter and the second one. Peter wanted to be in full partnership with Jesus. That's what he wanted. He didn't want just his feet to be washed. He wanted his hands and his head to be washed. He wanted to be in full partnership with Jesus. And I ask the question this evening. As he has washed you with his blood. Do you want to be in full partnership with him? Or do you just want a token relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? It's either total or token. Up to you. Up to you. What was Peter doing? Washing their feet. He wanted to be in full partnership with Jesus. 
He wanted to live in righteousness. And this was going to be an ongoing lifetime experience. Righteousness was going to be Peter's living theme from that time. Righteousness. Peter is writing to the displaced Jews. He introduces righteousness and presents righteousness as the outcome of salvation. You have been born again. Live righteously. He urges them to live as obedient First children. Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Hope to the end for the grace that is to be wrought, which is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now this is what I declare to you now. You have been born again. I'm not talking about if you're a member of this church. That's not the important issue. The important issue is that you have been born again. You know what salvation is. What's the outcome? Live righteously. Well, this is what I declare unto you now. We who have been washed in the blood of Jesus and not and are saved, let us not slip back into our old ways of doing wrong things. So let me tell you this. If you used to drink alcohol, stop. If you used to smoke, stop. If you used to commit fornication and have illicit sex, stop. If you used to steal, stop. If you used to tell lies, stop. You want to live righteously. Doing right. Thinking right. Walking right. Live as obedient children, loving and living righteousness. Peter remembered his commitment to the Lord Jesus on that eventful day. What was his commitment? Wash my feet, my hands, and my head. Wash these parts of my body, my feet. I am going out every day. I want to walk in righteousness. I am doing things with my hands. I want to ensure that what I do with my hands, they would be Righteous things. And this mind. Oh God. This mind. This mind that thinks. So many things. That may be contrary to God's word. Wash my mind Lord. Wash it. Cleanse it. I need the cleansing. And even though you were suffering dearly, Peter writes to those who are suffering in First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. He says, Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, 
Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So this is what we declare unto you now. Peter learned love. He learned the God kind of love. He learned humility. And he learned it well. He was able to tell the scattered Jews in various lands, enduring pressures in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6 he says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. He is teaching them humility. When we learn humility, we are able to exhibit humility. If we don't learn humility, we can never exhibit it. We will stay in our proud way of living without being humble before God. Peter was unable to endure suffering. He was able to live righteously because he came to realize that righteousness tended to life. It pertained to life. His desire was to wash feet, to encourage people, to comfort people, to instruct and to admonish, to minister to people. That's what these people on the wharf here are doing. That's what these ministers who have testified here tonight, that's what they're doing. We have a mission statement. Reaching, teaching, and appointing. R-T-A. That's our mission statement. We want to reach people. We want to teach people. We want to appoint people. Why do we want to do this? Have you ever asked the reason why? Let me tell you the reason why. Because there are many discouraged, depressed, frustrated disappointed people in our society even among believers let me run that by you again discouraged people depressed people frustrated people disappointed people broken people in our society and even among believers so what we need to do we who have been strengthened by the Holy Spirit we who are partakers of his salvation endeavoring to live in righteousness before Almighty God what are we to do wash one another's feet Minister to other people. Minister in a spirit of love and humility. Lifting up Jesus. Lend a helping hand. Minister to others. Jesus said, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. 
That's what we are to do. Lift up Jesus. He will draw all men unto you. By his spirit. It's not to be done in any other way. Are you willing to submit yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit? Are you willing to lift up Jesus so that he will draw all men unto himself? It's not drawing people to you. It's not drawing people to yourself. It's not even drawing people to the church. It's drawing people to Jesus. That's all. Lifting up Jesus. This is the important thing. You may not be a Bible school student. You may not have been to Bible school or any theological college, but you are born again. You are a witness. And beloved, let me share this with you. As you heard the message, lift up Jesus. That is the important thing. Lift him, lifting him up. Not yourself, not even your church, but lifting up I Jesus. Trust, as you have listened to the message tonight, uh, it will be a blessing to you. It would have been a blessing to you. And drop us a line or contact us in some way. This is Pastor Hart, Revival Time Assembly, wishing you Happy New Year. And God bless you richly.